Hello. Now I will try to briefly and, to the point, in just a few minutes, answer the question of how to start a business from scratch and how money and success come into our lives. How to understand that you are ready for your own business? When is it time to start a business? This is a very interesting question. How to attract money into your life? If you have the feeling that you lack money, if you feel a financial ceiling, then something needs to change. Even if you are a very skilled professional and everything is going well for you, but you've hit a career plateau. Yes, it happens. Or you just feel a burning desire, an itch. It seems like everything is there, but you feel bad. These are the signs that big money and success want to break into your life. If you feel that something needs to change, it's not just a feeling. You need to take action. But still, what's better? Starting a business as a novice with no experience or starting a business after completing some training in a company? Definitely, it's better to start a business in the aura of an already successful entrepreneur, to be close to them. Get involved, help with small tasks, go through it all. In other words, increase your inheritance, gain experience and skills. It's such an ideal scheme to find someone who is already doing business. Join them, even if it's like a leech. Join and watch, learn. And then, at some point, seeing what they've come up with but haven't implemented yet, go ahead and implement it. That's how most people do it. And I'll tell you, they are normal folks. That's what Steve Jobs did. He stole ideas. Microsoft's Bill Gates did the same, and many others do it too. So you too stop thinking about what you're thinking. Nobody initially has the brains to plan everything ahead and foresee everything. Brains appear along the way. First, you need to start the process, and that is action. First, something is assigned, and then you diligently and diligently develop what you have assigned. Just never implement ideas they gave you in business school. Understand everything, these are already used ideas. If they are telling you about them in school, guys, it's too late. Under no circumstances. Got it. Now I'm calm for you. But to be fair, it is worth noting that there are also plenty of stories where a young and inexperienced entrepreneur has achieved significant heights. However, these are much fewer compared to cases of replicating, appropriating or developing someone else's idea. And in any case, first things first, action. Without it, nothing happens. In connection with this, the question arises, what is better to do? Stick to what you already know or try something new. For example, if you're into advertising, go for an advertising business, or is it better to try something else? Let's imagine that you rely on your childhood dreams. But what if you were not given an inheritance or didn't meet a prince in the case of a girl? Well, if that happened, great. But what if not? What then? That's it, you lost. Therefore, it is actually more advantageous, pragmatic and effective to rely on what you already have. And try to make more out of what you have. For example, I know how to lay tiles, so I ended up in a construction team where through tile laying, by helping guys who couldn't lay tiles properly, I became a foreman and I managed to earn money to buy my first computer and I still had a financial reserve to stay at home and learn to use that computer. So you should always start with what you already have. Always. Imagine you are professionally good at something and you say, well, forget it. And you venture into a completely new field where you are a complete zero. You fall into a pit. And if you don't have some money or the opportunity to live during the time when you haven't established yourself there yet, what will happen to you? That's it. The end. Dead. This is one. And secondly, sometimes it happens that the niche you find yourself in is almost zero. So, I recommend those who don't have money in the niche to change it. A person can change their path, and I emphasize easily. Many people say no, no, it's impossible. I say it's possible, it's proven. Try it. Only new attempts, 10, 100 attempts. When you try, then write me a comment saying it's impossible. I'm sure your next, possibly the 121st attempt will be successful. Try. And again, let's go back to the question about the first business. At the initial stage, it is very important to calculate the cost of the product. How to do it right? 
to understand if it's still profitable for you to do it or not? Yes. Calculate the cost of the product. All this is very good. You can be ironic here. Seriously, guys? Do you really think you need to learn to be so prepared that you'll be sure it's worth starting? People who prepare a retreat plan or justify to themselves that they won't do anything. Of course, some level of readiness is needed. Some. But, as a rule, it's the kind that you're not ready for anything. In other words, if you are ready for something, it means it's already too late. Remember that. It's like in competitive sports. If, for example, you have the best sailboat, but you suddenly positioned yourself under the wind of another boat and you get the worn out wind. What's the use of being better prepared? You'll never overtake that boat because you're in the wind shadow since the first boat takes the best wind and you get the leftovers. You're better prepared. Yes, you're late. Now I want to tell you about one important secret. There are no strategies. There is only one strategy, the lion's share. If you grab the biggest piece, you can expect dinner on an equal footing with the hungry. That's the whole strategy. Each component has a weight coefficient and the optimal combination of certain components, timeliness, speed of action, the best partners and a successful niche is crucial for a successful business and some level of readiness. Some, but not complete. It's impossible. Don't waste your resources on excessive preparedness. This combination provides the best effect and direction for your implementation. The lion's share, a monopoly. That's how things are in very large businesses. Everything gravitates towards you because your gravity is immense. Everything is drawn to you. Of course, this is already a late phase, a kind of royal phase. You can call it that. But a bad businessman and entrepreneur is the one who doesn't dream of reaching a phase where he sits like this, does nothing and everything works flawlessly on its own. Ideally, if you can create your own unoccupied market, this is practically 90% of success. There is a concept called blue oceans. I won't go into detail about it now, but if you're interested, write in the comments and I'll make a separate video on this topic. In short, the essence of Blue Ocean strategy is the path of business development in which a company finds or creates a new niche, occupies it, thereby reducing competition to zero. But don't forget about the remaining 10% of pitfalls. Starting a business from scratch is possible, but initially, you'll receive returns almost close to zero. Your profit will be proportional to your investments, not necessarily monetary. Your time is the main resource. However, having startup money gives a good boost and saves a lot of your time. Where is the best place to get money for your first business? Is it loans, investments, maybe borrowing from relatives? What are the options? It's all very simple here. This is not a recommendation. It's a strict rule. No loans, no borrowings. All these must be money that either already belongs to the person, given by parents, or borrowed from a friend. Loans, borrowings and other leverage, so to speak, should only come into play when you already have a working business model. There's already a tested business that generates profits. You put a dollar in and it brings back two, one and a half or even five cents. But until you have such a business model, haven't tested it, checked its viability and so on, never take any money for the initial stage for process refinement. Never. But with investments, it's a little different. Investments refer to what is attracted at the stage when you already have a business model. Investors are not fools and before they see the viability of the idea, no one will give money. There is, of course, a very small layer of investments, so-called venture ones, super mega risky. And there are super mega risky investors who sometimes give money to some guys for certain projects. But this layer is very small. In our entire economy, the number of such projects is less than 0.1%. But in the media field, it's highlighted by 99%. Because damn how brightly it sounds. A person came, said he would create some platform, showed something on slides, and they poured money on him. And he went all happy to create his mega successful project. Well, listen, it's just a beautiful story. Okay, if you're betting on it, who will tell you that you're wrong? You're right. You're just a very high risk player. Very. Most likely, you won't die. The basis of success always lies in failures.
the foundation of any success is mistakes, setbacks, failures. This is almost a law. Just from these stones of failures, the pyramid of success is built. Paradoxical, isn't it? Act, fall and rise again and again. And to keep it interesting for you in this process, subscribe to my channel, get motivated, get useful information, and again, act. Good luck, my friend.